What's up, Deep Buzz and Devo? So you girls already know what time it is. And guys, it's Real Talk Wednesday. I sound like a piece of crap right now, but you know, it is what it is. So I know last week I was not here. I didn't do Real Talk last week um, because I have been going through a lot of shit. Like basically mentally, not even mentally, but health wise, like I really was not feeling it like last weekend. Um, well, not last weekend, but last Tuesday, you know, Tuesday and even Monday. Normally I do these real talks on a Monday, but, um, I wasn't really feeling that great. You know, as you guys know, I do have like health issues, nothing like major, like to where, you know, I'm going to be hospitalized like that, but just, you know what I'm saying? Like health issues as to like womanly issues, like womanly problems, womanly issues. So I do have issues going on with that. And if you guys are not aware of, um, or you're just basically new to my channel, please excuse me because I have to get my makeup. Um, or if you're new to my channel, I do suffer from bad fibroids. So I finally did go get an ultrasound, um, because I did get my health insurance back and I finally did go get an ultrasound last Thursday on the 25th when I came back from my trip to New York. But prior to my trip to New York, about a few days before, I think it was on either the 30th of September or excuse me, no, it was October 5th when I went to the doctors. Um, just, you know, because I have finally got my insurance back. So I had went to the doctors and, um, you know, we already knew that I had fibroids because I was already diagnosed, but they had gotten worse. And the doctor just basically told me my options of what I can do as far as getting them removed or getting, you know, not even getting them removed, but, you know, like shrinking them or, you know, shit like that. So there was one um, thing that I was thinking about, but it wasn't like a long term thing. It was only like short term to buy you buy you time as far as like if you didn't want to get the surgery right away or you had you need time to think about it or it just was basically to buy you time so it was the depo shot that I was like one option that I could have got and basically you know the doctor says it kind of like <clears throat> shrinks um freezes or no shrinks the kills it kills the endometrius and then it puts the fibroids to sleep so that was what I was told, excuse me, it was what I was told on the twenty um on the twenty fifth. Because I not only do I have fibroids, but I also do have endometrius. So I have to have one of my ovaries removed and my uterus, which I was gonna keep like both of my ovaries, you know, because listen, a girl really don't wanna lose any of her body parts. I'm saying, like seriously. So basically, um what I chose for was to do the surgery like the old school way, you know, when the doctor gives you like that, you know, that little bikini line incision and he does it by hand. There is another option where you can just, it's a robotic option to where the doctor is using like a computer and a robotic hand. So they, the doctor is not really able to feel and touch. So it may be like a scenario where you can have complications to your bladder if the machine accidentally touches your bladder. And I'm saying, like, I don't really want to be in public pissing on myself, but the only, like, pro about the robotic one, and that's not a pro to me, it may be to others, but the only pro to the robotic um, hysterectomy is you, you get, like, a couple of tiny incisions in the same area, but they're just a couple. So... I'm not like really worried about like the incision scar because that's just a part of life. That's just what happens. I don't really want to do like a surgery to where I might accidentally, you know what I'm saying? Have my bladder hit. And now I not only do I have to have hysterectomy surgery, but now I got to have like some type of bladder surgery. Like I don't really want to be in public peeing on myself or I can't hold it or I got to wear a diaper, or, you know what I'm saying? I, I really don't want to go through any of that. So I just opted for the old school way. Plus I know the doctor, he's going to do it. My doctor, I didn't really want to go out to another doctor and you know, all of that. And, and just mainly because I didn't want anything to happen to my bladder. You know, I just got to think long term. I need it. I really, really need it. So the 
ultrasound came back and I have like two, well, I have more than two fibroids, but two of them are like the size of like grapefruits. And so I'm wondering like for the longest, why the hell I have done everything in my power to try to like lose weight and lose my pouch. And all of this time I was unaware that these are the issues that are basically somewhat stopping me from getting to the point where I really totally am happy with my body. Um, I'm happy with the body, my body. I'm just not happy with my pouch area, my belly area. I just cannot take that. And it seems like also if you stop doing squats for like a matter of like a month, why does it feel like my ass has gotten like flatter? Like, I don't know if I'm bugging out, but that's just how I feel. And I haven't been able to exercise as much because, you know, normally when I have like my period, it's so bad. It's like horrific to the point where I can't, I don't walk. I can't walk. Um, when I did go home on Tuesday, I had to be wheelchaired through the entire airport just to get to the next plane because I was in so much pain like it was just the worst and it makes it so bad to where it feels like it is contracting I was unaware of the whole procedure with the ablation that I got like almost two years ago next month that the ablation it doesn't give you a full hysterectomy it just takes out and like burns it or some shit like that it will scar your walls and it will also make your uterus contract not all women, but this can happen to some women to where it feels like you're having contractions and your blood flow is like very minimal. Well, that's what started happening to me like months and months and months ago and um, like about eight, 10 months ago. And um, I didn't know what was going on, but my doctor now explained to me that that's what happens to the, when, to the body when you have an ablation. Had I known that, I would have never gotten that. I would have just gotten a full hysterectomy, but who the hell wants to, like I have this huge fear of laying on a table being put to sleep and you cutting me open and taking out my body parts like it just seems like it's so scary and it just seems so horrific and like it's really something that I don't want to have to do but I have gotten to the point where I just am not able to function okay and then I'm laid up for like days and I have to take like hardcore medication to where it's got me knocked out and then you know what I'm saying like I don't want to be like in a point in my life to where I'm not able to be mobilized because of like a womanly issue like it's not cool it's not fair and it's just like it's just like a horrible it's just horrible it feels horrible and at times I really feel like I just want to die but I don't want to die but the pain is so excruciating that you know there's really nothing that I can do about it there's no medications like the medications that I take they really don't do anything but just take the pain off very minimal and it put me to sleep like knock me out and I really don't want to feel like that anymore so you know, I have decided to go ahead with this surgery is despite the fact that I'm so like, I'm just really scared. Um, and I think like within a week, um, cause I did go Thursday, the doctor did tell me that his scheduler, his, his assistant will be calling me within two weeks. So that way they can schedule my appointment. So it should be for my surgery should be like in November sometime. Um, this is the one thing that I'm hoping for. Please don't fuck up my Thanksgiving, okay? Because listen, I know y'all bitches is probably like Thanksgiving girl, it's your health. I'm the one that does all the cooking. I refuse to fucking be laid up in pain or in the hospital during the holiday. I need to cook Thanksgiving and then I need to put up my Christmas decorations. So I'm really praying to God that it's not around that time because it's not like I can tell them, well, you know what? It's Thanksgiving. Can we like push that back. I can't do that, but I would really like to be mobile and be able to at least stand for a certain amount of time to be able to prepare my foods. You know what I'm saying? I cook like two days before Thanksgiving, even though today is Halloween. Happy Halloween. But this is what I'm telling you guys. So I'm hoping and praying that I don't be stuck with a situation to where I'm not able to cook because God forbid if I'm not able to cook for Thanksgiving, my kids are going to be upset. And I'm going to be upset. And I ain't trying to eat no takeout. But anyway, so that's what I've been going through. I was really in a lot of pain. So it's not like I stopped doing real talk. It's just that I had like things going on in my life. 
Plus, not to mention, I was kind of away and I was trying to take a break from YouTube because it didn't have me exhausted, but it did have me exhausted. Like, I've been doing too much. And then I have issues here at my home with my two eldest, not even my two because I have three older children, but the two eldest that live here, they're bickering. They're going back and forth. They calling the cops on each other. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I leave and y'all are arguing so I got the 16 year old and the 11 year old that's the most mature and then I got the 20 year old and the 22 year old that's bickering calling each other out calling the cops on each other like seriously this is what happened and then I'm like the only black family in my community whatever you want to call this so you know they're already probably looking at me like oh that's the black family. They always got the cops over there. You know how people take shit out of the norm and exaggerate it. I mean, like, let's be honest. The cops have been to my house enough times. Not for myself, okay? But for these, my kids. Like, cut it the fuck out. So when I came back last Tuesday, you know what I'm saying? I got in at, I think it was like 6.30, 7 o'clock. Listen, when I got home, um, I went ahead. Who the heck is texting me? <laughs> my husband um when I got home I made it my business to have a talk with them I, I I thought about everything that I had to say prior to when I had to say it may not have came out in those particular ways in that fashion but I said everything I wanted to say and without spazzing out going off screaming and yelling at anybody because it seems like when you scream and you yell you just it's not even helping in the situation. They look at you. They're not really hearing anything you have to say. And then you start looking like a crazy person. And then sometimes I just feel like this. Y'all see me screaming and yelling, maybe because y'all feel like I'm just crazy or to the point where we're not going to really take her serious. You know what I'm saying? So I sat down with them and I made it my business to be very stern and when nobody about to cut me off because I'm not about to have that shit. You know what I'm saying? And nobody's about to cut me the fuck off. So I let them both know that all of this is ridiculous, embarrassing. I've done enough for them. I have helped them in every situation and you cannot help nobody unless they want to help themselves. And at this point in my life, I am stressed out. I have health issues and y'all are too grown for this and it's time that y'all move out and learn on your own. So I was even decent enough to give them until the end of January to move out of my home. And then I also let them know if you want to act up before then and be disrespectful, you can leave before that date. Point blank period. I said there's a door right here. There's a back door. There's the garage door. And if you even want to take your motherfucking asses out your windows and leave, then feel free to do so. So nobody didn't say nothing. I did receive apologies. But at this point in my life, I'm over the apologies. We grown. Okay. I'm not saying that you guys have to pay every single bill in here or kiss my ass. But it's about being responsible and it's about respect. And if you can't give me that, then you know what? The door is there, there, there. And there's a window you could take your ass out of it just as well. So I let that be known. And I didn't have any issues with that. You know what I'm saying? Nobody was like, oh, you know, nobody was trying to bash me or just be like, how could you do this? Because like I said, you grown. And when you grown, you need your own, especially if you feel like you cannot follow my rules. Okay. Now my rules is just as simple. It's simple. Don't be up in my motherfucking house with no nigga or no bitch. Okay. Don't be just, just don't disrespect me or my household in general. And I haven't had that. Like, don't get me wrong. Ain't no niggas and bitches. They ain't bringing nobody up in here, but it's just other shit that I'm just not able to deal with anymore. And I'm just like, the type of person I am, this is how it is out here in Arizona. If the police are called to your home and it's an altercation and something was broke or somebody yelled at somebody too much, you know what I'm saying? They will take your ass to jail. And meaning I've had a situation where I've had to ask the officer. So you're telling me if somebody's cell phone was broke, you taking them, it doesn't matter. They taking your ass to jail. And I know the type of person I am. I don't really have patience, but for so long and I cannot take but so much. So I know as a person, as myself, that I can spaz out at any minute because I have talked to you and talked to you and talked to you for so long and you haven't freaking like, you, you just haven't changed. You haven't changed your ways. You haven't changed your habits, you're still doing the same shit. So if I keep talking to you till I'm blue in the face and then 
you keep doing the same shit, eventually a, ber a person is going to spaz the hell out. Like, a bitch gonna spaz out. And I'm not trying to go to jail. Granted, I probably would get out like the next day. But knowing me, I'm not trying to sit up in there. So I would probably waste money bailing myself the fuck out over some bullshit. So I feel like it's best for me to just allow them to stay until the end of January, get their shit together, give you time, and then y'all can move out. Because I'm not trying to go to jail and I'm not trying to be stressed out. I'm 44 years old. I have five children. My youngest are 16 and 11. They don't give me no problems. So therefore, I don't feel like you two grown ass motherfuckers should neither. Um, and I'm just over it. Like, I'm just really, really over the whole bullshit of being stressed and irritated by my own children so you know I, I love them to death don't get me wrong I do I love them to pieces to death I do I, and I would do anything in the world for them however you gotta want to help yourself before anybody want to help you you can't just expect the world to just gravel at your feet and just do shit for you you gotta you gotta help yourself you know what I'm saying? And I don't, I don't, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that enough. So it's time for you guys to either sink or swim. You're going to have to do this on your own. You know what I'm saying? I'll be more than happy or I'm always going to be there. And if you need something, just call me up and I'm there. But we're going to have to do this outside of my home. You know what I'm saying? Like my, my kids, my, my two younger kids is getting stressed out. Like they tired of the bullshit. And you know what? I've been tired of it, but I've been trying to be decent and hold on because for one, my son is 20 and then for two, my daughter, she has a grand, my grandson, that her kid. So I've been trying to be really decent about it. But I'm being decent, but y'all are not. So therefore, it's time for April to put her foot down and say, bye-bye. Okay? You guys can get it. I got it. I moved out when I was 19. And I had a kid. And I was able to survive. I moved upstate New York from New York City. And then I moved all the way across the country to over here. You know what I'm saying? Within, not, not when I was 19. But you, you guys get it. Over within the time frame. So, you know, that is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It's either sink or swim. You got to learn to be responsible on your own. You can't just always depend on people to do shit for you. And I'm sorry, but me personally, I wouldn't want to be living with somebody who is going to tell me what to do all the time, especially when I'm grown and how to have my room clean or, you know what I'm saying, what to put away or clean up after myself. If that was me, I would probably been got tired of my own self. If I was my own mother, I would been tired of myself. You know what I'm saying? Because if I have to constantly keep telling you something, I'll be tired of hearing you. Either I'm going to be tired of hearing you and I'm going to get it together or I'm going to just move the fuck out. So what did I do? I moved out. However, I was a different type of kid versus my own kids. I was more responsible. You know what I'm saying? I didn't do the things that they do. So it's, it was a different era. So you know what I'm saying? I can't really compare myself to them. But I will say this. It just feels like when you have children, it's not all of them, but some of them sometimes, they feel like you owe them so much. They feel like they're owed this, that you know you are entitled to the shit that I do for you or that you may want for me. And no, you're not entitled to it. You're not owed this. Whatever I do for you is what I do for you out of the love of my heart. And also maybe because this is what I'm supposed to do for you, you know, not because you entitled to it or you owed it. It's none of that. You know what I'm saying? You're not entitled to shit but you know we shall see we shall motherfucking see um but yeah I'm, I'm i'm not trying to be mean about the shit but i am looking forward to just the peace and quiet in my home and you know what i'm saying just just the peace and quiet in general like i don't feel like i should be irritated you know i bust my ass on a daily basis in here, like doing shit. So I just feel like if I'm busting my ass, not saying that you should, but maybe you should, but you understand what I'm saying, you guys? Don't have me doing it all and then you just sit back and reap the benefits because that's what the fuck I'm feeling is going on. So I've been doing that. Like I have been like cleaning house, you know, that's what I mean by cleaning house. And I have just been really trying to just chill. You know, I just try to figure out a way that will work best for me with YouTube. Like, not having to stress myself out about it as much and worry about the views. Um, and, I mean, like, I do like to put a video up every day. But this is my thing. If I can't get to it in a timely manner, then I just, I guess I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? I'm just not going to stress myself out about it. But... You know, I will definitely make sure to do real talks. But I do apologize for last week because, you know, I wasn't here. So, I know you guys are like, girl, 
what is the hair that you're rocking listen bitches okay this wig i actually just did the video for it and i'm honestly about to take it off because i've had it on since saturday and it's tuesday and i'm only taking it off because i have a synthetic wig video to do so it's been on since then but this is from my first wigs okay this is not the one that i did like a month or two months ago this is a brand new one this is a new arrival okay 20 inches i don't know what the hell is with these 20 inches these days but honestly this does not look like 20 inches this is way more and it's a lace frontal okay and i did have it glued down well not glued down excuse me down so hairspray down and it's been on for like since saturday saturday morning when i did the video so it is now time to take it off now see it's coming off easy because you know it's been on since saturday and this is all i do and then it's off you see me you feel me you see now if i really wanted to put it back on first of all let me just clean this little bit of hairspray flakes that's in my hair. Now, see, it doesn't really leave any residue in case you guys have been wondering, like, how does it stay on or does it leave any flakes? You have, like, a little bit of dry hairspray, and all you got to do, like I'm doing, is brush it off. But do you see this? Look. Their wigs are so freaking amazing. Like, I'm saying, they are amazing wigs, and the, the, the lace on them is just, like, so transparent. Look at that. If I, wanted, if I wanted to wear that shit down here, girl, ooh, how does this look? This would be like, hey, y'all. Like, it's your girl, April. Today's wig tutorial is going to be how to wear your lace fronts on your forehead, okay? Now, being that I have a longer head and my forehead is kind of long, it probably doesn't even look that bad on me like this, you know what I'm saying? Because, look, I, my hairline is all the way back here, and this is my natural hairline, like, seriously. So, I could wear it here, and it'll look good. I could wear it right here, and it'll probably look natural, you know what I'm saying? It still looks natural even right here, okay? Because my head is so long. But, this wig is like bomb as hell like seriously this is a bomb as hell wig it's one of their new arrivals it's uh 200 density i love it i know i look crazy right now for real talk okay i should just left the fucking wig on but i really wanted to get ready and i wanted to like kind of like get my edges ready and do a get ready with me with you guys um so yeah that is basically what i have been up to um i'm just been trying to get it together okay and i just sprayed some of this um uh rose water on my edges you know you could do that so yeah you guys other than that um just with my life situation you know what I'm saying um Everything is all good, I guess. Everything is cool. Um, don't you hate when you just... I just washed my hair, okay, and rebraided it. I mean, the hairspray is no big deal. It's not like a big deal. It's better than that got-to-be crap. Like, that got-to-be glue or got-to-be gel will leave your hair a freaking mess. Like, now the hairspray is out. It's gone. So, yeah, it'll leave your hair, it'll leave your hair a goddamn mess, and you have to definitely rewash so other than that that's what i've been up to you know i've just been chilling and i ha i did promise you guys that i was going to show you the new product that i've been using so or for my hair I, I mean it's not new i've been using it for like a couple of months uh, not like a month um so yeah i did show you guys that. i did want to show you guys this so just bear with me one second i want to go change my shirt because it looks kind of ugly and i'll be right back okay so i'm back so yeah i've been using some new stuff in my hair this is the mark anthony true professional 100 percent coconut oil you can use it for your hair and your body so i've been using it on my edges i love this stuff that i was using before um which was by um oh god i can't remember 
I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm trying to see if I have anything around that's similar to it or that is a product of it, but I don't. Um, so organic something, um, edge root stimulator, whatever. So it didn't seem like it was working like I really expected it to. And on top of that, you cannot distribute it through the entire hair. You only can put it on the portions that, you know, you need it, you need the growth. So that was like the downfall of it. And my hair, believe it or not, it gets very dry. It's, it's, it's not like it's I have um I don't know what fucking letter it is like 4C 5C 8A I don't know what the letter is but um it's curly when it's washed um it's it's on a thinner side it's not as curled it's not as coiled but um it does you know it does need moisture too so the downfall was I wasn't able to use that product on the entire head and you really didn't get a lot and because I wasn't able to use it on an entire head I didn't really like you know what I'm saying moisturize my hair like I was supposed to so I started using this product here which I'm so happy about because a lot of products that I do need to use to moisturize my hair they weigh my hair down so bad. Like my hair looks like a greasy, you ever see a white person when they didn't wash their hair and it's really greasy and it's flat? That's how my hair will look, way down like that. So what other products, pink lotion, it doesn't matter. So I've used this and this actually does not weigh my hair down. Plus, bitches, hello. It keeps my hair moisture for like a week. You know what I'm saying? When I leave my braids in. So I actually really do like this stuff. And it's been helping with the breakage and the growth. So I do like that about it. So, you know, I think with this proper care, I probably won't have to use all those different type of products in my hair. You know what I mean? To make my edges grow back or whatever. Just with a good moisturizer and shit like that. Because see, it is growing back. Just as not fast as I would expect it to. But it's, it's hair. It's not going to grow overnight. So I do appreciate appreciate the fact that this stuff really does work for me. I mean, and like I do have the other products by Mark Anthony, the hydrating curl cream. Um, this just eliminates frizzes, tangles, and defines curls. Um, it's free from sulfates and parabens. That's how you pronounce it. So this is also 100% coconut oil. Um, and you just apply a generous amount to wet or damp hair and you distribute from the root to the ends for best results. So I'm not really sure what this product does. It's just a hydrating. So it just keeps your hair moisturized and eliminates frizzes. But I was going to use this on this wig that I have from um, RPG Show that's really, really defined curls, like really, really coily. So I might have to use that. Um, and then I also do have one of their curl defining lotions. And this is just... A humidity shield which I'm excited to try out and this one here is a seven and one leave-in treatment foam which is also for curls delivers seven benefits for flawless curls defrizzes defines moisturizes detangles so what's so cool about these products let me tell y'all they're available at Walgreens you can get Mark Anthony's products at Walgreens and what's also really cool they're cheap so this was ten dollars you cannot this ten dollars is good like some people be like that's expensive this really isn't this works you can use this on your body if you want to I don't use it on my body because I've got enough bath and body works lotion that will help me out but these products are super cheap like i seen this yesterday at walgreens for eight dollars so i mean these products are really good if you don't want to try anything just try this like dead serious you can use it for your body and your hair so i've been using that and it's been keeping my hair moisturized which i'm really happy about because i need the moisture but other than that i have been chill i've been cool and also another product that i really love as i did buy a sample size a trial size of this this carol daughter's um original leave-in one conditioner oh my god God, this hair milk shit mmm hunty this stuff is amazing like I washed one of my wigs from best lace wigs with it this curly wig and it was amazing like it came out the curls were so just different it was totally different and when I came back home with the wig and I rewashed it again I thought it was the dove conditioner and it wasn't actually that it was the Carol's daughter I didn't have it with me because I left it at my husband's house the bottle so when I went back this time I washed it again I washed my RPG show wig with it and it gave it these curls that that were never there and it just made it just like totally different like so this stuff right here this leave-in hair milk nourishing conditioner girl this stuff is bomb as heck like I don't know if I want to use this or the Mark Anthony's on that wig but either one of them is going to be used so you guys I'm gonna stop rambling on I'm gonna do my makeup with you guys I'm gonna talk about this real talk stuff and you know what I'm saying I will leave the information below for the products that I use in my hair and stuff like that.
Okay, so if you guys want a real talk, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk, okay? So that way I know it's a real talk. And if you want to change the names of the people that you are talking about, like, you know, y'all talking shit about people, you don't want nobody to know that y'all talking about them, then, you know what I'm saying, go ahead and let me know that you changed the names of the people in the email. Because if you don't, I'm probably going to change it. 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm going to change it because this is what I do. You know, 99.9.9.9. .9 .9 .9. Baby daddies, I will change it for you. I will because I don't want the whole world to know we are talking about your ass. So on that note, let's get into this real talk. Okay, straight to the real talk. All right, guys. So let's get into this real talk drama. Hey April, this might be a long one. You can call me China. My husband and I have been married for one year. We both relocated to Arizona from the Midwest and don't have a lot of family here. We're each other's BFFs. I mean, we do everything together. The only time we're apart is when we're at work. I never thought I would find a man who treats me like a pampered princess, but he adores me and I adore him. But the Negro barely touches me. April, we're not even in our 30s and we're humping maybe twice a month. And if I get it twice, I feel like I threw a tantrum and guilted him into giving it to me. I thought maybe it was my weight, although when we married, I was plus size. He said, it's not my weight, it's his. He's gained about 25 pounds in two years. But I tell him all the time, he's sexy as fuck. Girls love beards and bellies. Hell, whenever we go out, it's always several hoes trying to try me about mine. I'm so scared that we'll grow weary and grow apart. I know sex shouldn't be the focus in anyone's relationship, but it's extremely important to me and just can't help it. I just don't know what to do. I want kids, but at this rate, I'll never get pregnant. April, please help me put my romance back in my young marriage. So she didn't tell me her name. Oh, she did. She said we can call her China. She wants to be Asian. Okay. So, okay, so basically, China is having an issue with her marriage, okay? So they've been together, not really sure how long they've been together. I don't really remember if it said that, how long they've been together. But, um, hmm, let's see here. No, it doesn't say. So they lo relocated to Arizona, and I'm not really sure if the problem existed before they moved to Arizona. Like, you know what I'm saying? She wasn't getting none like she expects, but she's having an issue right now that her husband is not giving up the goods like, you know, how she would like it. Now, look, don't get me wrong. We can't always feel like sex is the main key to a relationship or to a marriage, like, because it's really, really not, but it does play a part, you know, that's your time with your spouse, you're intimate, you can show each other love, you know, that's just, that's just something that we fucking do, okay, that's just something we do, and I mean, granted, it can last for five minutes to two, three, four hours, you know what I'm saying, but it's the whole point of being one with one another, and being able to express your feelings, and fuck, Get your nut off and feel the fuck good. I mean, like, let's just be straight up. Like, seriously. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're going to get a nut off. You're going to get yours. I'm going to get mine. We're going to feel good. And then we're going to go to sleep. Or we're going to get something to eat. And then we might be back at it again. But China is not getting that. She's only getting it twice a month. And at first she thought maybe it was her weight. But they were, um, she was plus size before they got married. Okay. But her husband said, no, it's not her weight, it's his. So he's gained 25 pounds in within two years. I'm not going to say that's a lot because it's not. That's two years. I mean, it's 25 pounds, but it's better than 100 pounds. Listen, it's better than a whole lot of things, 25 pounds. And maybe he feels inadequate. Maybe he feels ashamed. Maybe he feels embarrassed or maybe his stamina and his energy is just not there to what it used to be prior to him gaining the 25 pounds. So I'm feeling like the prior to his 25 pounds, he probably was hitting it in all types of angles, switches, hitting switches. You know what I'm saying? He probably was really, you know, 
had his go had it going for himself in the bedroom with her because she's just now complaining about it. Okay. So he's claiming that it's his weight. She's claiming that she's only getting it twice a month. She wants to have a baby one day, but at the rate she's going, damn, he might miss those ovulation days and she ain't never going to get to pop out a seed of his. And she's just going to be sitting up there waiting, maybe even got a toy by then. And now she's feeling like, you know, he's only giving up the goods when she's throwing a tantrum or she's making him feel bad about it. But here's the thing, China. You had a conversation with him. And he said it wasn't her, your weight. It was his. Okay? So, it's not a you thing. It's a him thing. Now, here's one thing that I can suggest. And it might work. And it might not work. It all depends on the person. So, China's issue is basically with her husband. You know what I'm saying? He's not trying to give up any goods. He's claiming that. You know, basically, it's his weight. He's gained 25 pounds over two years. In my opinion, that's really not a lot. There are people that have gained more weight than that. I mean, weight is weight. We can either put it on or we could take it off. It's all up to us. It's how we, you know, construct our lifestyle, how we live our life, and how we want to continue. So they both are plus size, are basically. And I'm not really sure if they're both plus size, but China's been plus size prior to the marriage, okay? So it shouldn't be an issue. Now, he's gained 25 pounds. He's, she's getting it like twice a month if that and you know he's like no it's not you it's me like okay so we've heard that a lot of times it's not you it's me y'all might be saying like oh that nigga's cheating or oh he might be gay or oh he just might not be into you you know there could be a whole bunch of different key factors as to why he ain't really trying to give it up like that you know what I'm saying? Or he could just be point, point blank, period. His stamina is low. He's tired from working and doesn't have the energy. And it is what it is. That may just be the God's honest truth. So being, this is just my opinion. And I'm not saying that she has to do this or that it's going to work. I hate recording on this camera, my blogging camera, because I just cannot get the settings right for the life of me. And I hate when it makes my skin look like I've got jaundice or yellow, you know what I'm saying? Or my teeth look yellow. My teeth don't really look like this. But, um, listen, if you guys are both like overweight, and I'm not saying that China is, but she says she's plus size, and he says he's gained, she says he's gained 25 pounds in two years, what you can do, this is just my opinion, okay, my personal opinion, okay, is start taking walks together and start exercising together. Maybe you should suggest that to him so that way he doesn't feel like, you know, less of a man in the bedroom due to his weight. And yeah, you're right, girlfriend. Girls do, women do like men with beards and bellies, okay? We we do. Nobody's going for the perfect gentleman. Those guys who are the perfect gentleman or got the perfect body, rather, those sometimes be the ones who are so stuck on themselves. And I'm not saying that they all like that, but I'll take a great personality and demeanor versus a body shape. And like, okay, my husband, he, to me, he has the perfect body. He's always saying, oh, my stomach, my stomach. But I love him the way he is. Now, if he goes out and gets a six pack, honestly, I'm not really going to be too happy with that. And it's not because I might feel like somebody's looking at him because I can handle that. Like, Bitch, please, I'm not scared of you. Keep trying to look over here at this one, and you might get your feelings hurt. I just don't, I'm not into that. Like, I don't find, like, the six-pack and all of that shit cut up. I don't find that attractive. That's just not my thing. You understand what I'm saying? So, she's right. We do, women do like beards, some of us, and some of us do like a belly. That's you. That's your natural, that's you. That's your natural self. Just be you. But... If your husband is having self-esteem issues, because that's what it seems like, then honey, you gonna have to have him uh, help him snap out of that shit. Like seriously, like I get it. Not that mine's he doesn't have self-esteem issues because that doesn't stop him in the bedroom. But for me, like I just told you guys, my self-esteem is definitely within my stomach area. Okay. I feel some type of way about it. It's not that I feel embarrassed or ashamed. I just feel like it's not attractive to me. And I really wish I could get rid of it. This is not what I'm supposed to look like. And it's not to attract anybody. It's not to attract my husband to make him feel like, oh, I'm sexier. It's because this is how I feel about myself. And your husband may be feeling that way too about himself. But he also may be feeling that way about himself. 
and about how you may look at him. You know what I mean? So if you had this talk with him and he's already expressed the fact that it's not your weight, it's his, then what you need to really do is have another talk with him, another good conversation with the dude and let him know, like, listen, I understand how you may feel about your weight gain. I too may have some concerns about my own. And I think that the best thing for us to do is to let's work together let's exercise together let's work out together let's eat healthy together let's get in shape together so that way neither one of us feel inferior or self-conscious about ourselves understand what i'm saying like granted don't get me wrong sex is not everything it is, i mean it's not like you know her husband can have an accident today or tomorrow and his dick could fall off. You you don't know what's hap what can happen. It's life. Every day is a different day, okay? So what I'm saying is something could happen to where he's not going to be able to give it up. Not that his dick is going to fall off, but you guys get what I'm saying. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on sex. Like, oh, we got to have sex. It's part of the relationship. Oh, you got to have sex because you're in a relationship. Like, honestly... You don't have to have sex in a relationship. It's not about the sex. Like, I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. You want to have it. But it's not the most important thing. It is a part of the relationship. Yes, it is. But is it the key thing? No, it's not. It's not the most important thing. There are so many different other ways to express yourself. Now, don't get it fucked up. Don't get it twisted, bitches. Now, I ain't telling y'all I don't want to have none. Because uh, trust and believe. When a bitch go to New York, she all over hers. Okay, I'm all over my man. But it's not so important to where somebody has to feel self-conscious of their their body. Like, we don't want to make sex so, like, important to where the next person is feeling some type of way about their body. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there are a lot of people out here that are self-conscious and they don't like the way they look. And what do they do? They go out and they try to perfect it and make themselves look different or get you know their body done and I, i'm not knocking that because there's nothing wrong with getting your body done if that's what makes you happy then girl go get your shit done like listen like i tell y'all all the time trust and believe as soon as i have the opportunity to go get my ass and my titties done bitch they done Okay, so I'm not knocking anybody who gets surgery. But some people just still feel like, you know, that's not their option. That's not what they want to do. Or they just can't afford it. It's not in their budget. And I don't think, like, sex should be that, like, it's, it is important. But I don't think it should put you in a state of mind to where you're feeling self-conscious about your weight and your health. Like, you know what I'm saying? Sex is supposed to make you feel good. It's supposed to make you happy. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to make you feel closer to the person that you're having sex with, right or wrong. You know what I mean? It's supposed to have, you know, those type of effects on you. You're supposed to feel good about having sex. You're not supposed to feel like, oh my God, we're about to have sex. Let me suck in my stomach. Or, oh my God, we're about to have sex. Let me cover up my breasts or keep my bra on or keep my wig on. This is okay. And I'm saying this because um, that was me. Like, not lately, but a long time ago with my husband. Um, when we lived in New York, that used to be me. Like, I used to feel like so self conscious of my stomach and just self conscious of just everything about myself that I just felt. Like, let me suck in my stomach. So, like, I would be laying there with my stomach sucked in. Like, and there would be times, of course, I had to let go and I would forget about it. But these are the things that bother me. And they didn't bother him. They bothered me. Okay? Because if they bothered him, trust and believe, he wouldn't be trying to jump on it every day. But it bothered me. And I don't really feel like, you know, like I said, sex can last for five minutes to three to four hours. And in that time frame... There's, there should be no reason why the person should feel self-conscious about how they look while they're engaging in something that is meaningful and is bringing two people together or three people or whatever, whatever you into. But I do think that 
if your husband is having these issues and he feels like it's his weight, whether it be his appearance or his appearance and his stamina, both, I think that you should work on it with him. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all could lose a, a pound or two. Not saying that you're not happy with yourself, China. And if you're happy with your plus size, then girl, be about that. Because I'm going to be honest, I'm happy with my plus size. I'm just not happy with this belly area. But I wouldn't I wouldn't want to be thin. I wouldn't want to be skinny. I like my curves. And I like my body shape. I just don't like my stomach. And even if you lose one to five pounds, at least you're doing it with your husband. And it's making him feel encouraged. And it's giving him motivation. You know what I'm saying? And that will end up in a sexy sexual night. So I, I really honestly feel like, you know, He's having these doubts about how he looks and he has to because you're telling him like girls love dudes with beards and bellies. OK, and if he feels self-conscious about his looks and his weight, then the only thing he could do is do something about it. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing you can do. That shit is not going to happen overnight. It's not like you can rub on a bottle and say tomorrow morning when I wake up. Let me have a flat stomach or a big booty or be rich or some nice tits. If it was that easy, I bet y'all all y'all motherfuckers would be buying that bottle of the rub on so you can make that one time wish for the next day. Not even a one time wish, but you got to go out and buy another bottle. If you really want to, you know what I'm saying? Make another wish. So I'm pretty sure like if there was a bottle like that, that you could just rub on, you know what I'm saying? and wake up the next day or drink and wake up the next day and you have that wish or that request that you wanted i'm pretty sure every last one of y'all will go out there and purchase that motherfucking bottle regardless of how much it costs y'all will save your motherfucking coins up put that shit on layaway just to be able to have that bottle and get that one thing that you wanted whether it be some new titties a bigger ass a full head of hair a bank account or whatever I'm pretty sure that you all will fucking spend your coins on something that would really work like that. But it's not reality. It's not going to happen. So when you're upset about something and you're in doubt about something and you don't like something about yourself, what do you do? You do something to change it. Just like myself. I didn't like my weight. Okay. I didn't. And okay, granted, I procrastinated and I put off for the longest of how to lose weight or to lose weight and finally i got to the point where bitch this shit ain't gonna work for you overnight like you ain't gonna wake up tomorrow and the motherfucking pills are gonna work for you you're gonna have to do something about it okay if you want your butt to look better than what it does now then you're gonna have to do something about it if you want to have a neck again april like a bitch got a neck again if you want to have a neck again april you want to have to do something about it if you want to fucking slim down april you gonna have to do something about it. This shit is not in the bottle. You can't just think that it's gonna happen just because you're sitting there pouting about the shit. You gonna have to do something about it. And so, if your husband is complaining about his belly and his weight, then the only thing that can be done is if he, what, does something the fuck about it. And some people are motivated like that to do shit about it. Some people just don't have the energy in them. Some people just need an extra motivational hand just to guide them into doing something about it. I'll be the first one to be honest and tell you guys that I was one of those people. Like when I first started losing weight, not this go around, but many years ago, you know, I was bigger and I had just had my baby and I didn't even just have mumsy. She was probably like a few years old, but I was still big because like I said, the weight ain't going to go away the next motherfucking day. Like just because you have a baby don't mean that the weight is going to be gone and you're going to be back to slim trimmings. Nah, it don't work like that. Especially when you're having more kids and more kids. And then when you get older, that shit don't work out like that for you. Unfortunately, my metabolism is not like it used to be. Where I couldn't gain the weight. Now I can gain it with no problem. It's just a problem if I can't get the fuck off like that. So, why is always somebody calling me doing real talk? And I don't know why I answer these numbers with 602-435. Because it's not even a real call. See? They just hung up. Anyway, so what did I do? I went to the gym. Now, granted, this might not be the most motivational speech that I'm about to give to you guys, but I started seeing my husband go to the gym. And I was like, oh no. Ain't no bitches gonna be staring at my husband at the motherfucking gym. This is this is this is me. This is why I started going to the gym. Because he was looking all good, okay? 
he had lost weight because he came home from jail and he was looking all good. And though I don't, he looks good to me the way he was. Like, I like him. So I don't like him to be thin. I like him to be kind of burly and husky because I feel protected. You know what I'm saying? I feel protected. So anyway, he started going to the gym and working out. And I was like, oh, girls down there must be looking at you. You know, I felt some type of way, basically. So my New Year's resolution was April going to go to the gym. And that's exactly what I did. I went to the gym with him. We went five days a week. And he was my motivation. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he was the one that put me on to working out at the gym, showing me how to use the machines and stuff, and telling me how to eat and when not to eat, like, at certain times and, you know, shit like that. So it was because of him that I lost all the weight, okay, and the booty. I did lose my ass, unfortunately, but I gained it back. But anyway, so, you know, that was my motivation. And some people need that. Like, now I can't go to the gym. Like, I've tried many times already to do this whole gym thing out here. And let me tell you something. I'm not with all of the gym shit. Like, I don't really want to go to the gym and see y'all skinny bitches working out. Like, bitch, you need to be home eating snack. Okay, why is you even in here? Oh, it's to keep your skinny figure. I get it. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really want to go there and see that. And on top of that, I don't really like to be around a lot of people while I'm trying to work out. You know, to me, working out is just a private thing. Like, I don't really want you to see me working out, though you're probably not even watching me but i just don't want to feel like you are you know i don't want to see bitches in there with little ass aerobic uniforms on or whatever the fuck you want to call it you know workout gear on and i'm looking at them like oh, i can't wait till i get like that like oh, why can't i look like that like i don't want to see that that to me sometimes can be very discouraging when you go to the gym and you see all these fit looking people that don't even need to be at the motherfucking gym and it can be discouraging and then sometimes it can be very motivating but in my case it's very discouraging i rather just stay at home and work out and go for walks and that's what i do my weight loss journey might be a little bit longer if i don't go to the gym but i'm still working out at home and i have my essentials that i need that make me work out and work well for me and that's this is me now I don't know how I would feel now if my husband wants to go to the gym. Like, would I go with him? I probably would. Only because, listen, bitches. I'm going to have to scope out the motherfucking area. I'm going to need to make sure that y'all bitches is not even looking nowhere over in the April zone vicinity. Okay? But, in the meantime, I work out on my own at home. And it makes me more comfortable. It makes me feel a lot better with myself and also with my health. And even though I don't have the motivation that I used to have, like my husband is not here right now, you know, I still am able to work out because I'm at home. Oh, the light, the sunlight. Now, like I was saying, your husband, he feels some type of way about his weight. It's not gonna go away overnight, sweetheart. It's not gonna go away next week. Especially if you don't do something about it. And even if he was to work out and start doing something about it, you have to reassure him that it takes time. It takes time. That the sex is not always that important. But you need to explain to him, like, listen, listen, dude, I want to share intimate moments with you. I want to feel wanted. When, when a man is not touching you, it does make you feel unwanted. It makes you feel less as of a woman you know what I'm saying you don't feel good within yourself and you need to express this to him because all he's really worried about right now girlfriend is himself and how he looks okay and he may be feeling inadequate to you about how he looks because he's gained 25 pounds you have to reassure him that it's not about how you look sweetheart it's about the love and the care that you give me and I want to share physical moments with you in the bedroom. I want to become like one, okay? That's what I call it as becoming one. So, you know, and you also need to explain to him that, listen, I understand how you feel about your weight gain. I understand that. We all gain weight. We're human beings. We're human. Come on, man. Y'all think that y'all bitches wake up looking like this? I woke up like this. No, the fuck you didn't, bitch. No, you did not. I seen you. You did not look like that when you fucking woke up. I seen you. Hello. 
So all that I woke up like this shit, no, bitch, you didn't. You, you did not. But, you know, you have to let him know. Like, listen, when you're not touching me and you're avoiding having sex with me, it's you not showing me affection. And, okay, granted, like I said, sex is not that important. And, I mean, it, it is and it isn't. It's so hard to explain, but it is and it isn't. But companionship and feeling wanted and feeling like you're needed, that's really important to a lot of people, especially to women. And we need that. Like, even if it's not, like, in a sexual, like, you know, explicit way of touching, just even grabbing you and showing you that, hey, I love you, bitch. That's an expression. And China seems like she's just not getting that from her husband. And like, granted, I get it, dude. You may have gained 25 pounds. It's not the motherfucking end of the world. Like, seriously, it's really not the end of the world. Like I said, people gain weight every day. Shit, I probably gained like two pounds just sitting here talking to y'all motherfuckers. And it's not the end of the world. Sometimes, you know what I, I feel like with the world, and it's not even sometimes, it's it's an all-the-time thing. We emphasize too much on beauty and looks. And, like, who the buy to fucking even sit here and say that to y'all when I'm putting on makeup on my face so I can do a video? When if I really felt that great and secure within my looks, I wouldn't even have to put the on makeup. But, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But I think, like, with society, we put a, a, a lot of emphasis on our appearance and how we look to other people and shit. And like, honestly, I feel like sometimes we just need to live in a reality. Like this is reality, we're putting on makeup and we're putting on hair, that is a reality. But the reality that I'm thinking and I'm saying, I'm talking about is more or less the reality of where, what would we do if we didn't have makeup? What would we do if we didn't have hair? Like you gotta think, or, or these gyms, or these weight loss pills, or these surgeries. You got to think like back in the days, there was none of this stuff in existence. You know what I'm saying? People made this. This is man-made shit. Hair, makeup, you know, surgery, weight loss pills. This is all man-made shit. So what would we do if we didn't have this? And so you have to think in reality, you're either going to have to accept me for who I am, or you're not going to have to accept me for who I am. It's, it is what it is. And like with your husband... It's probably harder on a man to feel like, oh, he's gaining weight because, you know, men, they supposed to be the strong ones and the masculine ones. And you can, t and if a man is upset about his own weight, that means that it's really, really bothering him, you know. And it's unfortunate that this man, this masculine man has to feel like down about his own weight. Like we as people as women we need to stop our men and men we need to stop bashing people and their body sizes and their body shapes or their looks you know what i'm saying because if you don't this is the type of shit that happens like this man dude don't even want to have sex with his wife because he feels like inadequate he feels like his size his weight is like deterring him from doing sexual things and like that's not a good look that's not a good feel especially like body shaming and body like you have to have body positivity you have to be like proud of who you are be happy with what you got because a lot of people don't even have that shit and like for me like I know yeah I complain about my stomach and that's just how I feel and that's not then like it's not even that bad of a, a big deal it's not even that huge of a problem but that's just my self-consciousness you know what I'm saying and I really feel like you know if that's your husband and you love him as much as you do and you love his sex then you have this talk with him and then you offer you also offer yourself to him as in let's do this together let's go for walks together let's lose some weight together so that way he feels like i'm not just doing this alone when somebody has to do something by themselves and there's another person in the household with them they feel kind of like you know what i'm saying unmotivated they feel like they are basically they on the spotlight all eyes are on him he is looked at now as I got to lose this weight because I've already started and she's looking at me. So I got to definitely lose this weight. And that's like a heavy load to carry. Like you got people watching you or looking at you, not even people, but just you, China in general, looking at him like, okay, he's working out now and I want to see some results or, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what could be going on in his mind, but I do know this, that he does feel inferior and he feels really self-conscious about his weight and he needs help with that. A lot of men, it's a man. He's a man. He don't want to reach out for help. He don't want to ask for help. I get that. He's a man. But sometimes 
they a man, they supposed to be masculine and shit, but sometimes they big babies too. And sometimes we have to go to them and we have to talk to them like, listen, babe, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. If you need help with your weight loss journey, we could do this together. Don't just offer him suggestions, but do it together as a unit. You know what I'm saying? As a family. Okay. And also have your talks with him. Like, listen, women love beards and bellies, beards and bellies. Like I, I'm saying, I don't know about y'all, but I'm not really into that six pack. I'm not into that six pack shit. Like all of that shit, like all that working out. Like I don't find that to be attractive. And that's just me. I don't like to see your veins popping out your neck. You all toned and muscular and hard as a rock. I don't, I don't think that's attractive to me. That's just not attractive. And you know, to each his own, everybody has their preference. Okay. That's just me. I don't find it attractive. And if you find that attractive China, you need to let him know, listen, you looking good for me. Motherfucker, you a snack. You a whole. Don't say a whole goddamn meal because he might feel some type of way if you say that. But just let him know like, yo, you attracted to me. I love you for who you are. And I need to be touched. I need to feel that you love me. That's all you got to tell him. You got to let him know that, you know, even though he's feeling some type of way, it's also making you feel some type of way. And that's not a good feeling. And also... When you, we as women, when we start feeling some type of way, like, oh, he's not touching me, or, oh, we only having sex twice a month, or, hmm, we start thinking all type of shit. And this is, this, this real shit, like, seriously, like, if that were me, I would, I would have been pissed off. Like, I, I would have been pissed off. Like, I've had a tantrum about sex to my husband. This was a long time ago, but he worked two jobs, and he was coming home and he was during the daytime and he would have to go to work so he worked two jobs and he would be on the phone with me talking to me and then you know going from two times a day to like maybe like three times a week was not cool with me and so you know I did have a tantrum one day and he always brings this up like I did I went in the room one morning while he was sleeping and I just had a tantrum I can't remember his word for word but I do know that I was like well I want to have sex you're not having sex with me and you know what he said to me Girl, you ain't have to do all of that. Just take your clothes off and get in the bed. Okay? Closed mouth don't get fed. All right? Closed mouth don't get fed. China, if you sitting there, you wake, you make it, you waiting for him. Basically like this. China, if you sitting there, you laying in, you waiting for him to make moves. Sweetheart, make some moves on the motherfucker. Let him know he's attractive. Sometimes you got to make moves on them so that they feel like they wanted and needed. You know what I'm saying? Can't always wait for them to make a move on you. Granted, you know, we might be getting a little timid and shy. Like, I don't know. I want to feel a little. But, you know something? Try to make some moves on him. Don't make. Don't wait for him to make the first move. You know what I'm saying? When you make a move on your husband, like sexually, do you know how much that turned him on? I don't know about yours, but I know it do for mine. Okay? And do you know how much that turned him on mine? He liked that. They like shit like that. I think every man likes shit like that. Like, if you watch movies and TV shows, I think men like shit like that. So, you know, you got to make moves on him. You got to stir the pot up, sweetheart. You got to put some fire under that motherfucking pot. Put the flames. Ignite that shit, bitch. Get it popping, okay? Get it shit popping. Let him know, nigga, let me get some of this, okay? He, I bet you he won't be thinking about his weight then. But if you're waiting for him to put moves on you and he's feeling the way he's feeling, sweetheart, you're going to be waiting. So make some moves on that nigga. Let him know how his lack of sex is making you feel some type of way because he's not touching you. You know what I'm saying? And then also offer you guys to do a weight loss journey together. That's all it takes. And reassure him, like, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, you look good. Okay? You look fucking good the way you are. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not, like I said, all of that fucking muscular looking type of shit, it's not my forte. I just really don't find it attractive. I just don't. But, you know, to each his own. Everybody is entitled to how they feel. But it's unfortunate that having sex with somebody will make you feel like self-conscious about your body. And that's just not with him. That's with a lot of people in general. It's just life. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so many high expectations as to what a person or a woman or a man is supposed to look like. Like, I think, like, like you know what I'm saying? When women are overweight, we have the most 
judgment. But when a man is overweight, he don't get judged as bad as women do. You ever notice that? Like when women, they call us fat bitches. They call us, they call us all kind of things. And, oh, she's not attractive because she's fat. Or she's not attractive because she got thick. Or, you know what I'm saying? Or she got cellulite or shit like that. Like, but when it's a man, you don't really hear about it like that. You know what I'm saying? But it's more, we're judged more as women. And when you hear a man talking about he feels like because of his weight, it's really a bothering issue. And like, listen, like I said, I don't care what size you are. You could be a hundred pounds, bitch. If you wanted to gain weight, it's not going to gain itself. Well, it might just depending on your metabolism, but this shit is not going to work overnight. You got to work on it. You got to work on it. Everybody can lose a pound or two. One pound ain't shit. You know what I'm saying? Especially if it's going to help the next person that really needs to lose the weight. One pound ain't shit. You get motivated together and you work together. And that's all you got to do with him. Just go to him and talk to him and let him know how. You know what I'm saying? Just go to him. Talk to him. Let him know how you feel, how it's making you feel. Let him know what y'all can do together. You know what I'm saying? Work on it together. That's the only way that you're going to build his self-confidence self-confidence and also you're gonna get your shit back in order and also make moves on a nigga make moves on him i'm telling you girl you might get you a baby if you making moves on a nigga for real make some moves men like shit like that like they really do, they do. so now we're gonna get to the next one because i really want to be here all day taking y'all time up because listen it's 11 21 a bitch wanted to go to Bath and Body Works because they having a sale for $10.95 on candles. And it was only the one candle, which is Fresh Balsam. And I'm going to say this. That's one of my favorites. Fresh Balsam and Mahogany Teakwood is the only two that I really like. because And, and the pumpkin ones because you can really, really smell that. But, um, yes, Fresh Balsam. Bitch, I love it. And it's $10.95 and I got a $10 off coupon. I'm going to buy like, well, it says you can only buy 15 But I'm going to buy like 10 of them. Yeah, I'm going to buy like 10 of them bitches today and get me some fresh balsam. But that's what I wanted to do. So let's see here. Where's the next one? Okay, so this one isn't that long. So let's see. This is about friendship. Hello, April. <clears throat> you can call me Marie. Okay, so I'm kind of... Uh, Hey, April, you can call me Marie. Okay, so I am kind of in a, a little dilemma. One of my friends, you can call T, is getting married. She got out of a relationship back um, in May of 2000. She got, yeah, and what? She got out of a relationship back in May of 2018 and was heartbroken for some time until July of 2018. So July was just around the corner, y'all. She met this um, Nigerian man online. So her friend T met a Nigerian man online in July, in July of 2018. They've been on couples dates and the first week of them dating, he offered to pay for T's daughter's seventh birthday gifts. T said no, she has her own money, but he wouldn't take no as an answer. Later down the line, he kept telling my friend T she doesn't have to work and she can just be home for her kids and he will take care of her and her two children. The third week of my friend T um, and him dating, she and I went shopping and she was buying a whole bunch of shit. I said, oh girl, you must have got a raise. And my friend T said, no, my new boo gave me his credit card to shop on and his car to drive around. I was shocked because when I date, I would never go that far, especially if it's just been three weeks. T said he already wants to meet my kids, and I told him to wait a couple of months. I warned my friend that it sounds like he's moving too fast and he's trying to buy your love. So please be careful because men like that can end up down the line abusive or troubled if they are quick to rush too soon. She says she knows and she's been telling him not to rush so quickly. As we hang out, she never brought him up. And recently, tonight, she sent me a picture of a marriage ring and asked, Is this cute, girl? I said, For sure, but for who? She said, Okay, please don't judge me, but I'm getting married. I was already in shock. I said, Already? You guys only dated three months. And, and has he met your kids? She said, Yeah. They've met him last week and that I'm the only person she's told because she doesn't want her family to know. She doesn't really want to hear their mouth. So 
She's only told me because she doesn't want to hear her family's mouth. I told her, to be honest, I'm happy for you, but I think this is moving way too fast. And that, and that since your kid's only known him for a week, isn't that, that's not enough time to get to know him. I asked her what's the rush for, and she said she loved him and that I should just stop judging her. I told her, I'm just looking out for you, and I don't think this is a safe bet. She ignored my message and hasn't responded. T has two children, April, a daughter who is seven and an older son who is nine. T is only 28 years old, and I'm 21. I'm worried for her, and I think something is not right with him. She hasn't even told me this guy's name or what he looks like. Please help me out, April. I really need your advice, Marie. So basically, her friend T, Marie's friend T, met this Nigerian guy back in July of 2018 after already having her heart broken in May, okay, of 2018. So she met, she meets this Nigerian guy online, okay, online, and they started going out dating. Okay, so at least he was in the vicinity. He wasn't like in Nigeria, you know what I'm saying, some shit like that. At least he was local. So they start dating, and within three weeks, T is swiping this motherfucker's credit card. She driving his car around. He telling her, listen, boo, you don't got to work. You know what I'm saying? You can just stay home, take care of your children, and I will take care of you and your kids, okay? This is what he's telling her. I got you. I'm going to do everything in my power to take care of you. you know, all you need is me, boo. I'm here for you, okay? This is what he's telling T. And she's basically like, no, no, no. Don't move too fast, you know. So, basically, fast forward. They've been together three months. And the Nigerian dude finally got to meet her kids last week, like a week ago. And not to mention, she popped up on a message to Marie with an engagement ring or a marriage ring. Probably the whole goddamn set. And she's getting married. So, now her friend, Marie's friend T, is getting married after three months to a Nigerian guy. But here's the kicker. She don't want to tell her family. She's only told Marie. She don't want to tell her family because she ain't trying to hear her family's mouth. So, here's the thing. First of all, I know love has no limits or no time frame. But I'm sorry, dude. I'm not about to marry your motherfucking non-citizen Nigerian ass after knowing you for three months. That's right there a red motherfucking flag. I'm sorry. Nothing against Nigerians or any Africans or any motherfucking foreigners that were not born here in the United States. No shade. But I'm sorry. I'm not about to marry somebody that's from another country within three months of meeting them. And I met your ass online. <sighs> you crazy. That's not about to happen. So... You know what I'm saying? That speculate. That makes me speculate all kind of things. Dude, why are you trying to be in such a rush? Dude, why are you trying to marry me so fast? Dude, why are you trying to tell me you're going to take care of me and my kids so I can marry you? Dude, are you serious right now? Do you really think that I'm about to fall for this? But unfortunately, T has fallen for the motherfucking T. That bitch done dropped the cup and slipped all on the motherfucking T. That shit is spilled on the floor. And T's ass done landed the fuck in it, bumped her head. And now she don't know who the fuck she is. And she's just like got some type of amnesia. And she about to marry this Nigerian guy after knowing him for three months. And her kids have met him last week a week. Seems like somebody needs a green card. Okay. That's just, in my opinion, seems like somebody needs a motherfucking green card, bitches. Okay? And I'm sorry to say that. Woo! Did I just poke myself in the eye? <sighs> Let me just hold back the tears because I really don't want to ruin my makeup right now. But I'm going to just really hold back the tears. I'm going to just hold my eye open like this because I really don't want my eye to run. But... And I'm going to just talk to you guys as my eye waters up a little bit. But it seems like somebody needs a motherfucking um, green card. I'm just saying, like, in my opinion, it seems like he needs a green card. And am I acting a little shady by saying this, what I'm about to say right now to you guys? But you ever get an email? I'm pretty sure you guys have gotten these emails before. And they're spoof emails, they're spam. And it'd be like from somebody from Nigeria telling you that you are a descendant or an, uh, of, of their family and you've inherited all this money and this is what you need to do. And it's always in a, in a Nigerian country. Like, have you guys ever freaking gotten an email like this? Like, there are so many different scams out there 
with Nigerians and shit. Like, I'm not trying to throw no shade, but I'm just saying it's the truth. Like, seriously. So who's to say that this dude that T don't want nobody knowing about but Marie and her two kids is legit? Like, if a nigga give me his credit card to use after dating him three weeks, I'm definitely going to speculate. Like, dude, I'm good, but no thank you. Because when you give somebody something like that after a certain amount of time, like a short time, there's something behind that. And I'm not going to say that that's with everybody, but I'm just going to say this. Put your motherfucking antennas up in a red flag signal. Because me, personally, I'm feeling like old dude needs a motherfucking green card, a visa, or whatever the fuck he can get out of this bitch that's born and raised here in the United States. That's just what I'm feeling. And if you bitches is feeling that way too, and if y'all are sensing that, then please, please, by all means, leave your comments below. Now, Marie, you ain't never met him. You don't even know his motherfucking name. You ain't never even seen a picture of this dude. But you do know that she was dating, she started dating him and they went out on dates. This is what I want. This is what I want to ask you because I'm starting to feel like your friend right here. She ain't really being totally honest with you. That dude ain't in the United States and he just sent her a credit card to use. And this is how I'm feeling. And that that's why she don't want her family to know about it. This is just what I'm saying to you as a person, as a female, as a human being. If you ain't never met the dude and you ain't never seen a picture of old dude, okay? And when I say a picture, I don't mean just a picture of him by himself because. Anybody could do that. I need to see a picture with you, bitch, T, and Nigerian man together. Like, I need to see a picture with the two of you together, like, hugged up, booed up, or just together. You know what I'm saying? I need to see a picture together. Don't just send me any picture of just him by himself, because that really is not providing me much of proof of anything. The nigga could have sent you a picture from Nigeria, okay? Now, first of all, y'all met each other, not y'all, Marie, but they met each other online. And this is just me pretending to be Marie. This is what I would say to myself. So y'all met each other online and I didn't even get to meet him. I don't even know his name. And um, yeah, I've never even seen a picture of him. But yeah, he's offering you all types of gifts, okay? And just to take care of you and your kids. But T, you don't want anybody to know about him but me. Why is that? Why are you being so secretive, girl? If he's a good man and such, why, why are you trying to keep him from everybody? Is it because you don't want nobody else to grab him up? Like, what? what is it? So when I start seeing these things, and also you guys have went out shopping together, and she was just spending it up, but y'all went out shopping together, okay? Did y'all go together in the same car, or did y'all meet up at the shopping mall or wherever y'all went shopping at did y'all meet each other there to where you weren't able to see the car that she was driving because she did say t did say that nigerian let her use his credit card and drive his car around now we don't really know how truthful the car thing is because we don't really know if she drove it there you know what I'm saying? Especially since Marie never got to meet dude, see a picture of dude, or anything like that. So, I'm feeling like this. This is just me. I'm feeling like the dude that she's talking about, Marie, is still in Nigeria. And it's easy to send somebody a credit card. But the part about the car, I think that's just part of the made-up portion to make you feel like he's really physically in that state where you guys are at. But I feel like he's still in Nigeria because, for one, he met her online. For two, she don't want nobody in her family to know about him. She don't want nobody to know that they get married. You seen just a picture of a ring. He could have sent her that picture or she could have picked it out and said, this is what I want from him. You know what I'm saying? I don't really feel like he is physically here in the United States with her. I feel like he is using her to buy her love so that way he can marry her okay or better yet 
she knows that he's not a citizen and she knows that he's trying to buy her love. But of course, she's not going to tell anybody about it because we're all going to judge her. Okay. So, and a lot of times when people get out of bad relationships, like heartbroken relationships, and then they get into another one right after, it seems like the new relationship that they're going into, they're not really like their eyes, they're not really like paying much attention. They're not like really in it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they're not really focused on the person that they're getting the in the relationship with now like the new relationship they so heartbroken and distraught from the last relationship that they're not really seeing clearly and i think like with your friend t this is her this is her right now she's feeling like this nigerian man is gonna swoop her off her motherfucking feet and carry her to back to africa with him like you know what i'm saying he gonna swoop her off his off her feet and he gonna take care of her and her two kids like i'm sorry but if i was old dude and i just met you i'm not about to take care of your motherfucking kids like i know that might me sound mean to say but in reality i'm not about to take care of nobody's kids that i just met after two three weeks and damn sure not after three months like bitch i'm not even really trying to marry you i'm just trying to get to know you and i just find it real suspect that somebody will want to get married so fast after like three months and shit that you want to marry me and take care of my kids before the three months was even official after two three weeks he wanted to take care of her kids if a nigga tell me listen boo you can just stay home and take care of your kids and be with your kids i'll take care of you you don't have to work and we've only been together for two weeks nigga i'm gonna look at you and be like the door's right there get the fuck up out of my face with that bullshit i already know you're trying to tell me some shit that you think i want to hear which i really don't want to hear that bullshit if you told me that shit after three months i'm still gonna tell you you're full of shit if you told me that shit after a year i'm still gonna tell you okay nigga it's only been one year you really full of shit. I ain't about to give up my job for you so you can take care of me. Girl, bye. But that's just me thinking rational and making sure that my own fucking feelings and future is okay. Never depends on a man to fucking take care of you and your kids. Especially one that ain't their biological father, okay? And you just met him. I think that nigga's in Nigeria. Like, honestly, I think that nigga's in Nigeria and your friend just really don't want to say something about it. And she's probably saying that you're hating and judging her, but you're really not. You're looking out for her best interest. But you know what? It's unfortunate that we have people like that in the world that just don't see it like that. They start to think like, oh, you mad because you ain't in a relationship. Or, oh, you just mad because ain't nobody taking care of you. Or, oh, you just mad because ain't nobody hitting that. Or, you alone. You just jealous because you ain't getting nothing and all of this. And she might feel that way. But, bitch, no, I'm not jealous and damn sure ain't about to feel no type of way. Because, bitch, what you about to get is really scammed. Listen, Marie, if she's not fucking listening to your messages and she's not responding to, to them, there's nothing you can do to her. She's a grown-ass woman. She can make her own decisions. And she's got kids and family this is what i would do though because if you really are a caring friend and you really do care about her as a person this is what i would do i would make it my business to take my ass to her motherfucking house why does this one eye look like it's thicker i would make it my business to take my ass over to her place where she live at and have a good long talk with her maybe you could accidentally run into the nigerian if he's really in the united states like Seriously. But my opinion, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that feels this way. I don't think that motherfucking African booty scratcher is anywhere in the United States. And that's no shade to fucking anybody that's African or a foreigner. We used to say that as kids, African booty scratcher. And I'm going to call him that because I believe in my heart of hearts that the nigga is scamming a bitch. And he want a green card. Some type of sponsorship to get over to America. I really don't think your friend has ever physically seen him. Okay. All she's seen is a picture of him. And that's not even fucking why. You, you really can't hold that up. Like, you can send people pictures all day, every day. That don't mean that's really them. You know what I'm saying? You can do FaceTime with the motherfucker. That don't really mean it's them, okay? Listen, I have watched enough Catfish the whole motherfucking seasons in, like, two weeks to know that you can be fucking scammed, catfished, and all that good stuff in a matter of fucking minutes to your face. And you will not even know, okay? Like, seriously, the nigga can be telling you he's from Nigeria when he's motherfucking on the run, a killer. You don't know. And and here's the thing. This is just me. And I'm, I'm really feeling like you should go over there and have a talk with your friend. Like, do a pop-up, bitch. Like, a pop-up, like... <laughs> 
pop up at her house uninvited, okay? I hate when motherfuckers come to my shit uninvited, but I ain't got no friends, but you know, I just don't like people bringing my daughter like that. But do a pop up. If that's your friend, bitch, do a pop up. What's she gonna do? She gonna get mad because you just popped up over there and she got Mr. Nigerian in the house. Oh, well, here's my opportunity to meet you. This is where I could be in the, ma in the wedding. Let me be part of this, okay? Do a pop up and let her know, like, listen, I got some real concerns for you. It's not that I'm hating. It's damn sure that I'm not jealous, okay? I'm not even worried about having a man or a relationship like that right now. What I'm trying to tell you is this for your own good. And let her know. Like, seriously, she got a, she got two kids. She got a seven-year-old daughter and a nine-year-old son. Where's her baby daddy's at? Somebody need to talk to them because if this is really the case and he really does live here in the United States, you're about to move some motherfucking total stranger in the house with you and your motherfucking kids okay like these are little kids these not even kids that can defend themselves you know what i'm saying we got a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old what can they fucking possibly do to some one adult grown person like not much they they might can do some shit you know what i'm saying don't never doubt a kid because they can put your ass in the ground but why should they have to go through all of that why should they have to get out of character because your mother because their mother made a mistake, as in being so desperate in love with somebody that she she brought in some fucking foreign Nigerian guy into the household. Like, seriously, if that was my friend, I would definitely be going over to her house and having a talk with her. Because this is starting to seem dangerous to me. And, like, I really feel like it's dangerous. And, and honestly, and your, your friend, T, she's probably not going to like the fact if you tell her that, you know... You did a video or you sent an email to me. You could let her watch it and all. You could let her hear me say this to her. But just text it to her. Text her the part where it goes into the details about her. Just text it to her. You know what I'm saying? I honestly feel like she needs to be aware. Be very leery. Be aware of who she's getting herself involved with. There are so many scams that come out of Nigeria that it's a shame. And it's unfortunate that we have to be on our P's and Q's when we want to meet someone and we want to be in a relationship. But it's like that. There are too many fucking people around here that are weirdos. You fucking sleeping with kids. You pedophiling. You doing all kind of shit. She don't know this man like that. Three months is not a long time. Three months ain't shit. Okay, a year ain't even long enough time, especially to move somebody around your children. Like, I couldn't do that. I, I just wouldn't, and I couldn't do that. Like, I just couldn't. I couldn't see myself moving somebody in to my home after knowing them for like three months, especially around my kids. Like, first of all, I don't even want to be around you like that every day. I just met you, but to even move you around my kids after three months. That's like a scary thing. Like, you know, you have to be very careful of who you meet. People tell you who they are. And a lot of times they're not who they really say they are. And it's unfortunate that we have to be so skeptical and we have to really, really put into existence an investigation on the person that we're dealing with because you just don't know. People are sketchy. Somebody could be getting with you just because they know you got kids and they trying to get to your kids. And like, that's not a cool thing to think, but it's reality. Like, seriously, it's a reality. This is what happens in the real world. Men get with women all the time because they have kids and they just want to be with these women so that they can do wrongful things to the children. Like, as I was saying, like, it's serious. Like, men get with women all the time. Not every man, but men do this. They get with women because they have children. And it's not that they really want to be with the woman. They want the woman and they want their children. So you have to be cautious about who you have a relationship with, especially when you have kids. You have to be cautious about who you bring around your kids. You know what I'm saying? People tell you, oh, I, yeah, I do this and I can do that for a living. But that don't mean that I'm this and I'm that. That don't mean that. You could tell someone something until they blew in the face all day, every day. Just because you tell someone that this is who you are and this is what you do and this is your family does not necessarily guarantee you that this is who this person really the fuck is and if your friend is too ashamed to tell her family because she's telling you that she don't want to tell her family because she don't feel like hearing their mouth she's a liar that's a lie she ain't trying to tell her family because of some other reasons okay and if the bitch told you she met him on online and he was nigerian straight up what as soon as i read that and she said oh well they met online i'm like okay great here we go another online dating issue they probably never met and then she's told then i keep reading oh they went on dates and shit and blah 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 i'm thinking that oh okay they really went on dates and then when i seen the part about the nigerian i'm like 
this is a scam. This is a scam. And you know what sucks? What if I'm totally wrong? What if he really loves her and he really cares for her and her children and he's a great person and he's actually physically here i could be wrong but unfortunately nigerians and their scams that we get in emails and shit this is what we start thinking when you're a foreigner and you try to hurry up and get married to somebody you just want fucking sponsorship and citizenship you know marie she gonna do what she want to do and what she loves she loves him Three months is, is not long, but I mean, you cannot stop your heart from loving somebody. Like, there's no time frame on, oh, I love this dude. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I can't even remember if I loved my husband in three months after, after, after knowing him. I can't tell you that. Because that was so long ago. That was 20 years ago. Um, but I will say that that's your friend. And as a friend, as a friend... I would pop up at her house, especially if she lives in the vicinity, and let her know your thoughts, how it makes you feel, and your concerns. Not that you hate it, because like I said, a lot of people get it screwed up when you have concerns about them and what they're doing with themselves. They feel like you hate it. No, bitch, I'm not hating. I'm concerned about you. That's what the fuck it is. It's about concern. And if you can't get through to her, I hate to say it. It may sound like a snitch move, but if you know her family members, I would definitely reach out to them and let them know, listen. I mean, because it's only right. You don't really know what dude's true intentions are. And God forbid that something happened that you could have helped avoid. It would make you feel bad. So me as a person, I'm sorry, bitch, you ain't never got to be my friend again, but at least I looked out for you and your children and I saved you from a heartache, disappointment, and probably a big scam, okay? I would reach out to the family. If she wasn't trying to hear me, then I would reach out to her family. It's a concern. It's not called hate. And it maybe it's not even snitching, but we got little people involved in this. We got little people, little people, Little people, kids. We got little people involved in this. And when you got kids involved in shit, it's serious. Like, I'm sorry, but maybe I'm old school, but don't bring nobody around your kids. Like, seriously, if that ain't their father, don't bring them around your kids like that. You got to really get to know them. Like, don't have dude one over this week and then do two over next week around your kids. Like, that's a real thoughtish move. I'm like, I mean, to each his own, but I'm just saying, people do all kind of weird shit and you don't know who people really are. I wouldn't bring motherfuckers around my kids. It don't matter what age. You're not coming around my motherfucking kids. These are my kids. And at seven and nine, that's a very, very impressionable age. And if this Nigerian man really do exist here or wherever, and she marries him and he actually gets to come here, she don't know what she set herself up for. You know what I'm saying? Me, personally, the whole thing said red flag all over to me. Like, seriously, like, it just screamed red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. Like, okay, this nigga needs to get um some type of sponsorship going. He trying to get with me for some sponsorship. I mean, like, if that were me, I wouldn't even fell for none of that shit. I, I just really wouldn't fell for that shit. First of all, I'm not even going to talk to a Nigerian. That's not even about to happen. Second of all, and it's not, like I said, it's no shade against you guys, but each person got a preference, okay? And mine is not Nigerians, okay? But, me, dude, you wouldn't even be fucking coming near my kids at three months. You damn sure ain't about to marry me. And I'm not taking your credit card. Trust indeed, bitches do love money. We all love money, but listen. There's a price with everything. There comes a price with everything. And trust indeed that your friend, she probably running up dude's fucking credit card. And if he is allowing her to drive his car, which I don't I don't really believe that part. I don't think that she was driving his car. I'm thinking that she only told you that so that you can think that he's physically in that state where you guys both reside at. Because if he's got a car there, then he should be there, right? Yeah. I don't really think that he lived wherever you guys live at. I think the nigga lives in Nigeria still. 
and they ain't been on no motherfucking dates, but online dating, okay? And all he keeps doing is woo woo wooing her, so that way he can get her in good, and then he can go ahead and he can get him a shorty, that he can go ahead and get him some sponsorship, and move his motherfucking African booty scratcher ass over here to the United States, and then once he gets here, he starts treating her like shit, and just fucking doing all kind of things, because it really wasn't about her, it was about motherfucking getting over to the United States. Did I say that? Hmm. Did I sum that up for you guys? I hope I did. So, on that note, let Marie know what you would do if that was your friend, T. Like, okay? Or have you ever been in a situation like this? Or has somebody ever tried to talk to you from another country and started trying to woo-woo-woo you and you've seen the red flags? Let Marie know what you would do. Me, personally, in a situation like I said, I would just go to her house. And if she wasn't trying to hear me and she was still trying to scream that shit like, oh, bitch, you just mad, you hating, you jealous, then I will be like, you know what? <clears throat> Not mad, and I'm definitely not hating, and I'm definitely not jealous. What I am is concerned for you and your kids, okay? That's what the fuck I am. And, okay, T, I understand how you feel. I just want to look out for you, and I want to make sure you are right. As a friend, I love you, but I understand you're grown, and you're going to do what you want to do. And I wish nothing but the best for you. And then just leave it at that. And then bitch turn around and call her motherfucking family and tell them all the motherfucking tea. Spill that whole motherfucking pot of hot-ass tea. That's only to fucking make sure that she okay and her kids okay. Your friend probably going to be mad at you. She probably going to hate you because her family going to come for her. But you know what? It's all about love and concern. And it seems like your friend T is making a really bad decision right now. And I pray for her. And I hopefully for God that you can send her this video and she can see T. This is from April. Listen to me. There are so many scams going on from all over the world, especially with Nigerians. And if he's not physically here and you're lying to your friend that he's physically here and y'all been going on dates, but she has yet to meet him, know his name, or see him, then, sweetheart, open your eyes, okay? This is a scam. You have children, okay? You don't know what anybody's capable of doing. After three months, that's not a long time to get to know somebody. You are still meeting their representative, okay? This is a representative that you're meeting right now. He is putting on a facade, okay, for you to get in good with you to get sponsorship. Point blank. Look out for you and your kids. You will eventually find someone that's perfect for you and love. Love comes for those who wait and who is ready, okay? The wrong type of love, which is not love, comes to those who are vulnerable and just want to be in a relationship. And it seems like that's the one that you're in right now. A non-love relationship who's just trying to use you. So please, please think about this. And on that note, guys, I got to go. I got to do this video. And I'm going to go do, um, yeah, I'm going to go do the video. But I'm also going to go to Bath and Body Works. Got to get me some fresh, balsam bitches. I love you. Make sure y'all check Walgreens out for this, okay? Like, listen, hunties. Oh, I love this stuff by Mark Anthony. Like, seriously, this is like some bomb stuff. And it was $10 at Walgreens. Right now, they have a sale going on. Buy one, get one 50% off. So you can get yourself two products. I'm going to try the curly ones out today on this wig that I'm going to review tomorrow. I was really going to review it today, but I don't really know how I feel about it right now. After seeing um someone's video on how they did their like really really curly coily wig i think i'm going to switch it up a little bit so that i can get that look so yes you guys y'all but yeah i love you guys um stay diva and divolicious make sure you rate comment subscribe show me some love share this video with everybody you know what i'm saying oh my makeup did come out really really cute i have to get to i gotta work with this camera i have a canon g7x vlogging camera this is not the camera that i use to do my videos all the time with but i just cannot get the settings right because it's a vlogging camera but okay bitches right now a bitch is not looking jaundiced like i'm looking really really cute it's not got my teeth looking all yellow thank you jesus okay but now it looks like the colors change. i don't know but either way glad to be back missing you guys um and shit like that i do miss you guys when i don't do videos and i feel guilty but you know it is what it is can't wait for fucking March to get here. Ah, Y'all might not see me for like, well, nah, I'm a, I'll be lying because my husband will be home. So I could do videos still. He'll be here. But a bitch can't wait. But I will keep you guys posted on my, you know, my surgery. That might be when I stop doing videos for like a week or two. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't really need to be perfect looking for certain videos, but I will try to still do real talk depending on what day and how I feel. But I will definitely keep you guys posted on my surgery um and shit like that. 
and I love you guys and I hope you guys have a great day. Stay diva and delicious. Stay away from the scammers, okay? Yeah. I'll see you guys soon. Why does it look really cute? Oh, oh. Huh? 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 What? Damn. 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 Damn.